Good evening, Internet. This is recording number 10 of this. I'm really hoping this one ends up working properly. I've had lots of miscellaneous problems with this recording. Um, it's been annoying. Um, first off, fair warning, you may hear some rather chirp, ra random chirps and other background noises. Today is a beautiful day outside, so I have my windows open. That means, one, you'll randomly hear spring wildlife. Two, you'll randomly hear my cats chattering at spring wildlife, um, whether that be birds, squirrels, rabbits, dogs, big dogs, badgers, skunks. You get the idea. Uh, and three, you'll randomly hear some cars moving on by. One of the recordings was completely obliterated by the fact that there was a group of motorcycles that decided to park in next to my window. Uh, that was the same recording that there was somebody else that was pulled over. I've gone through this quite a bit, as I said. Um, in any case, today I want to talk to you about hacks, or things that you do to make things work better. And that was not really meant to do that way. I have got to find a better way of phrasing that. Perhaps I will in the comments. Um, this was a recommendation by a predictor, um, mostly because I had no idea what to do today. So, hacks, or these are the things that I have done as hacks. Um, my definition of a hack in this case, there's multiple definitions, um, what I'm using in this case is something that is working in a manner that it's not supposed to. Yeah, that's a pretty good definition. Um, so first off, I'm going to cover my computer. Um, my computer, the computer that I'm currently at, I should say. The computer that I'm currently at is Crin. Um, See? Crin. Should look awfully familiar. Uh, this is the machine that we were using in order to do the how to install Linux video. One moment. Before you ask, this is cream soda, not beer. But I'm really thirsty and this has frustrated me enough where I want something sweet and carbonated. Um, Crin is my... Mm, sorry. Crin is my both gaming machine and my workstation. That is to say that this is the machine that I do any hard work on, whether it's gaming, um, editing videos, I actually do that on Crin, um, ripping DVDs, things like that. Anything that's actually labor-intensive, because Crin is by far my most powerful desktop. Crin is not normal, though. Um, as you may see from the screen, these things don't look like normal Windows. And I assure you, this is running Windows 7. Um, what I have here is one of my first and more obvious hacks. This is what's called a desktop replacement shell. Um, shells in Windows parlance is a interface that's used for drawing the use uh, drawing the UI. That's a horrible way of phrasing things. I apologize. I've actually spent over two hours on this video. I've already broken my own personal rule on these, but I'm tired of it messing up. Um, Shells come from back when the Windows 95 days. When you first installed Windows 95, on the very first version of Windows 95, you had a little screen that asked whether you which shell you wanted, whether you wanted the old uh, program manager shell, which is what Windows 3.11 and earlier used, or, or actually 3.51 and earlier, or if you wanted the new Explorer shell, which is the shell that's been used from Windows 95 up into Windows 7. Uh, Windows 8 sort of, kind of has a different shell, but not really. The, the, anyway, um, this is a replacement shell. Uh, this shell is called Emerge Desktop. Um, Emerge Desktop is the shell of choice for me. I used to use a shell called Lightstep before I started using Windows 7. Um, they all function somewhat similarly, the idea being that they replace the start menu and things like that with other styles of interface, potentially things that are really pretty, potentially things that are, well just functional. Um, I personally have things that are more functional in my case. Um, for an example, if I right-click the desktop, I have an equivalent of a start menu. I have access to things like you know the regular start menu, programs, all of the other fun stuff that's in there. I have a quick launch bar, I have the things that are on my desktop, I can go into settings and change some settings, you, you get the idea. Um, these to the top left, these are actually quick launch icons again. Um, I have a lot of the apps that I primarily use. I can edit these as much as I want. I can make the icons larger, smaller. Since this is primarily used on my TV, I am trying to make the icons relatively large. Um, over on the top right, I obviously have a clock and calendar. Um, this is the system tray, which is normally in the bottom right on Windows 7. Um, it's double-layered. 
lots of things. If I mouse over it, some of the things that I've hidden appear. Otherwise, I keep a lot of things that are not really needed to be seen. In the middle are my active tasks. I have Quassel IRC, the client running for it. I have Google Chrome running, and I have VirtualBox running. Mm. Mm. Sorry about that. Um, Crin is unique in lots of other ways. So for an example, um, loading up my computer, you notice that Crin has a bunch of network drives. This is actually my file server that's running actually directly beneath Crin. It's a lack of a better place to put it. I have an SSD, I have a hard drive. Inside of the hard drive, I, or inside of the SSD, I have the hard drive mounted again. That way Steam doesn't start complaining about having things on the wrong drive. Um, you get the idea. Also, Crin is not exactly a normal machine, period. So, not only are my hacks more software-oriented in Crin's case, a lot of them are software-oriented, along with the rest of the hacks that I'll be talking about today, uh, I also have a hardware hack. So, Crin's processor is a little on the old side. I bought the processor two and a half years ago. I think it was released around three years ago now. Yes, it's chirping. Um, it was, it's definitely the slowest component of my computer. So I did something what's called overclocking. Overclocking, the idea behind overclocking is that a processor is normally set to a particular clock speed. Um, if you hear a gigahertz, that's a clock speed typically. Um, used to be referred to in megahertz. Uh, Crin's normal processor is a Core i5-760. It normally runs at 2.8 gigahertz. I have it running at 3.36. Um, the reason why I did this is twofold. One, I needed the CPU performance increase for Skyrim, actually. And two, as strange as this is going to sound, I needed to intentionally heat up the insides of Crin. Um, I have problems with my computers. It's called overcooling. If, you, if the inside temperature of your computer drops a little too low, hard drives will start locking up. And by too low, I mean below freezing. And yes, that's happened to me many times. Um, Crin also has a lot more RAM than most computers for a gaming machine. I threw 16 gig of RAM in, so I never had to worry about RAM ever again on this machine. I probably won't ever have to. Uh, if you're curious about the rating, um, still the processor is still the slowest component of Crin. Everything else is rather high up there. I have a decently nice video card. I have fast, fast, very fast, very spacious RAM. And I'm running an SSD. 7.9 is as high as it goes. I think under Windows 8 it would probably be more like it. 8.8 or something like that. I have a very fast SSD. Um, other things that I do with Crin? Um, I run Linux Mint on Crin. Um, we did this for the How to Install Linux episode. We created this VM for Linux Mint. Um, I will boot that up now. I actually use this VM. Um, when I started doing some of the editing for these videos, I figured out that I didn't have a good video editor. Started searching online, Turns out there isn't any free Windows video editors. I'm not counting Windows Movie Maker. That just no, no. So um, I did, however, remember that there's video editors in Linux. Um, so what I did was that I used that VM that we created. This is basically the same VM, and then I installed OpenShot. OpenShot's a video editor that I use. I've edited uh, many of the Vitas on OpenShot. Um, it's a pretty sparse video editor. If you're used to things like iMovie or Sony Vegas Pro or Adobe Premiere or anything like that, this is going to seem really basic. Of course, that's all I really need. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down now. I didn't actually need it for any particular reason. Um, so, that's generally it for my PC. Um, I have lots of other devices that are hacked as well. Um, let's start counting them. Um, we have... Let me turn that off of my PC. Um, I have my phone. Um, my current phone is actually not modded. It's not rooted. Um, the Apple term would be jailbroken. Uh, my phone is not. My previous phone still is. I am kind of hacked it for Kreditor. Um She's the one that currently has my phone. My old phone, that is. Um, my PSP is modded, my Wii is modded, my phone, or not phone, ugh. my camera is modded. Yes, I actually have custom firmware on my camera. Um, 
I'm not really using any of the features on it, I just thought it was nifty. And last and most certainly not least, my PS2 is modded. Um, this I actually have a TV tuner in Grin, so this is actually a it's that side. Uh, this is directly from the TV tuner. I just have the, my PS2 plugged in via S video. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it's like. Uh, let's see, should I do a reset? That's not gonna work. Let's just go ahead and load, and you'll see what I mean. Um, so, what I have is this is well, it's basically a mod chip. Uh, it's not actually a physical mod chip. This is using a software hack. Um, my Wii is the same way, along with my PSP. They're all software hacks because I don't like fiddling around with electronics in that regard. I'm okay with fiddling around with a lot of electrical stuff. I am pyrophobic, so soldering triggers my pyrophobia, so I can't really touch a soldering iron very easily. So I can't really install my own mod chip. Um, these are all of my PS2 games that I have installed to my hard drive. It's not actually an exhaustive list because I keep forgetting to install more. I have a 200 gigabyte hard drive attached to this. It's a rather old hard drive. You can't really get too much larger, so I'm not able to actually install all of my PS2 games. Um, yes, before anybody asks, I actually legally own all of these games over to my... There, that, that works. Um, over to my right. I'm just lazy. That's the primary reason why I modded it. Um, I never wanted to get up to put a disc in the drive. I still don't like putting discs in drive. I actually have the same thing on my PC. So rather than doing that, what I do is that I load my games to the hard drive and then use this interface to launch the game. So for an example, let's say I want to launch Atelier Iris. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the audio currently working for this, so you're, it's going to be kind of quiet. For some reason, my um, the open broadcaster software that I'm using in order to record this isn't recording audio. Other programs can get audio, so I know it's not that, it's the software. Yeah, it's going to complain about lack of memory card plugged in. Um, but this is Atelier Iris. I mean, there's nothing different about it. This isn't an emulator or anything like that. This is a real PS2 running the real game. Uh, load times are substantially faster because DVD drives are really slow, especially the PS2's DVD drive. Whereas hard drives are relatively fast. The one that's in there is actually really slow, but really slow is nothing compared to a DVD drive. And, yeah, um, this is my PS2 controller. Can you see it? Can you see it? Um, it's a Logitech wireless PS2 controller. I love these. This is by far the best PS2 controller I've ever had. Um, I might as well go ahead and you get the idea. I'm controlling this. I'm actually looking at my computer to monitor to in order to control this. I'm just going to go ahead and stop that. Um, like I said, I actually have a very similar setup on my PC. So I'm going to go ahead and show that really fast. Um, you may have noticed that I have two CD drive type things. Uh, this is my actual DVD drive. I have a as Mega Dio DVD in it right now. And the other one is SimCity 4. Um, you know, see, standard SimCity 4. It's a second disc. Um, I wanted to make sure I was able to play it. This is not actually a CD, though. Um, I do have the CD. Let me grab it and prove it since this is actually convenient, unlike everything else that I have. Do, 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 Sim City. Um, you get the idea as to just how many PC games I own. This is a really heavy, big binder. And, see, SimCity 4, actual legitimate disc. I'm, I don't pirate games unless if it's an extremely old game that I actually can't find, and even then I typically buy them off of eBay, because I like owning games. I like supporting developers, although I know buying it off of eBay doesn't really support developer, but it's the best that I can do. Um, what this actually is, is that I have this media drive here. This is loaded off of my file server. Um, my PC games are in here, and I don't have all of them ripped, but I have a huge chunk of them. Huge chunk of them ripped. Um, and this is actually where the SimCity 4 disc is. So, say for instance I want to play SimCity 3000 instead. Uh, that's a bad example. Uh, let's say if I wanted to play Age of Empires 1 instead. Uh, it's been a long time since I've played that. I can go in there, right-click, mount image. Takes it a bit to mount. 
Age of Empires. Yeah, it's not going to be happy with this. Um, I can install it from here. It's Age of Empires. Nothing special. I don't like having to put optical discs in. And this brings me up to what it means to me to hack something. Why I would want to do these things. I do these things for typically one of three reasons. One, convenience. Um, for me, just being able to right-click the desktop and having everything that I need is much more convenient than going down to the bottom left-hand corner and clicking the Start button. It's not that way for everyone. This is definitely a personal preference. Um, using Launchy, for instance, uh, if I wanted to run Putty, I can just do that. And then connect to my home file server right here. This is convenience for me. It's definitely not convenient for everyone. Second reason. Um, let me switch back to just plain camera. The second reason that I mod, hack, alter things in some regard is because I want it to work better. So there's a lot of copy protection, there's a lot of slowdowns when it comes to DVDs, stuff like that. I avoid all of that. I'm not running off of real DVD, I'm actually running off of my hard drive. Hard drives are an order of magnitude faster than optical media of CD, DVD, Blu-ray, doesn't really matter. So it's much easier and better for me to just run it off the hard drive. I have plenty of hard drive space, although I'm starting to run a little on the low side here. Um, oops, yeah, that's the right one. Um, as you can see, I'm down to 811 gig free on my file server. Uh, this is actually four hard drives, believe it or not. Um, what was I saying? Oh, and the third reason is because I'm curious. I learned this way. Um, the reason why I first got into shell replacements, for instance, and started fiddling around with LightStep was because I was bored with Windows Explorer and wanted to see what other options I had. So I did, and I learned quite a bit about Windows that way. I know how Windows Explorer works. I know which components actually rely upon Windows Explorer. I, even back in the XP days, I figured out ways of removing components of Windows Explorer because I never needed them, and thus... Um, Actually, Windows 2000 was the one where I actually got Windows 2000 fully installed, plus a few applications installed on a one gigabyte hard drive. And for those of you that are really young, hard drives used to come in sizes below hundreds of gigabytes. Um, my first hard drive was 20 megabytes, not gigabytes. Um, I learn about the way things work by messing around with them. Um, there's this stereotype of the person that gets handed a brand new toy and the first thing they do is take it apart and the second thing they do is put it back together. I wasn't quite to that extent growing up but I am actually now. Um, the first thing I do with my phones is try to break them. The first thing I do with my gaming machines is try to make it work the way I want it to. It's the way I am and well I think people like that about me. I have been talking for over 18 minutes so I'm going to go ahead and stop this now. Hopefully this doesn't break. I'm tired of recording these today. I mean, think about it. If I've recorded 10 of them and this is nearly 20 minutes long, how many hours have I spent doing this? Um, if you have any recommendations for what you want to see next time, leave them in the comments either on YouTube or Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter or LiveJournal or ASR or OK. So just let me know what you want to see. Um, Tomorrow I'm probably going to do a board game. My alternative tomorrow is that I might actually do a recording outside because it is so beautiful outside and I think that might be nice. I've never tried taking my tripod anywhere. Enjoy internet and I will see you tomorrow. I'm almost done with Vita. Woo!